This video is a postscript to the game between Andrei Yesipenko and Magnus Carlsen. Of course, I'm sure you all know by now that Yesipenko defeated the world champion in, well, a huge upset. Um, well, do, do check out my video if you haven't already seen it. But this game is between Vasily Ivanchuk playing white and Paramarjan Negi from India played in 2010. And this game follows exactly this line between Yestipenko and Carlsen. So I thought it'd be interesting to see this game because it's also really dramatic. Well, we know uh, Vasily Ivanchuk, or Vasil Ivanchuk, as he likes to be called these days. Um, his opponent here, uh, Paramaja Negi, well, a very strong player, former Indian champion, Asian champion, played for the Indian team. But now, actually, this is ten, played 10, 11 years ago. Um, he's turned away from chess and is studying for a PhD at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Anyway, <laughs> let's come back to this game played in the Greek team championship in 2010. So proper chess, classical chess. And once again, the move order to this game was via a Nidorf. And now after bishop e2, e6, we've gone into a Schäveningen variation. And Ivanchuk follows exactly the move order of Yesipenko. Bishop e3, which perhaps looks at castling queenside. You're not committed yet. Uh, there's still the option to castle kingside as well. Bishop e7. So we're following Yesipenko Carlson exactly. And now g4. So this is the move that shakes black up because suddenly white switches into a kind of carries attack. And it's it's not a bad carries attack. You could argue that perhaps this bishop is slightly mis misplaced on e2, sometimes in the carries attack. Well, it, it usually stays on f1 and then only commits later. Nevertheless, it is still extremely dangerous. So black has a choice. You could play h6 here. So just stall white for the moment. Uh, knight c6 is also possible. Um, I mentioned d5 the other day. Uh, and actually, that's not a bad move. Although, I mean, classically, one's supposed to counter in the middle when one's opponent um, advances on the wing. And this is what uh, Topalov did against Nakamura. I mean, it's obviously more comfortable for white. Those bishops are very pleasant. But Topalov succeeded in equalizing this position. Um, but yeah, it's better for white. That bishop is, is uncomfortable. Anyway, back to this game. b5 played. So we're following Jespenko Carlsen exactly. And a3 again. And this is the this very interesting pawn sacrifice. Which, frankly, at this moment, just doesn't look that bad for black. Bishop takes g5. And queen d2. And here is where Carlsen exchanged on e3 and played queen h4. Queen h4 was, looks misguided. I mean, the queen probably should end up on e7 where it protects the d-pawn but also keeps a, a, a close eye on the king side. <clears throat> anyway, let's come back here because... In this game, Negi did not exchange on e3. Instead, he played the bishop back to f6. So now we're on independent territory. Well, uh, the rationale, of course, is that if the g-file is open, then the bishop covers the g7 pawn. And also, as in most Sicilians, if the bishop comes to this long diagonal, then it can be very threatening across the board. Castle's queenside from Ivanchuk. So white is ahead in development and yeah, has this open G file. Now, this is an interesting moment in the game. 
Ivanchuk played rook g1. On the semi-open file, at the moment, well, it kind of doesn't look very special because the bishop protects the pawn on g7. You know, what can white achieve there? And I think, well, it's, it's very clever, actually. I think what he had in mind was this. If black were to castle, I should mention castling was not played, but if castles, then knight b3, the queen attacks the d-pawn, and if the bishop drops back to e7, then the bishop comes to h6, and lo and behold, black is basically overstretched. The bishop guards the, the d6 pawn, but now g7 is vulnerable, so white is going to win material. So that's the point of rook g1, that actually he was dissuading Negi from castling. In fact, in this position, black could give up that pawn, and, and it's, it's not too bad for black. But after rook g1, Negi was obviously thinking, well, you know, I've taken this pawn, I, um, I think I want to keep this pawn. And he played knight c5. Right. Now, it's over to you. Time for you, for you to do a bit of work. How would you play here? If you had the white pieces, what did Ivanchuk play next? Okay, had time to think. You can always pause the video. E5. This is such a clever move. And I'm sure completely overlooked by Negi. Uh, by the way, it was possible to play bishop takes b5 check there. But okay, that's, that's another story. But e5 is, is a convincing move. Right, so the pawn can be captured in two different ways. Uh, Negi actually took with the bishop. Let's just have a quick look at pawn takes. In that case, you can see the knight, the knight support has been eliminated, has gone. So knight takes b5, and one can very simply take the knight on c5. Um, now, in this position, it's still not completely clear. In fact, let me count the pawns. White is still a pawn down. However, the king, for the moment, is caught in the middle. And this pawn is about to drop. There's nothing that black can do about that. So now material is even. And in this position, well, you can see that white has three connected past pawns. And in fact, a pawn drops on the king's side. There we go, that rook on g1. Um, proving its worth again. The, the problem is here, black can't hold everything together. As I said, this pawn is dropping either with bishop or knight. In fact, if black doesn't take care, then the king is really going to be caught once the knight comes into this position. So basically, white should have a winning endgame there, which I'm sure Negi appreciated, and that's why he played bishop takes pawn on e5. But now... Knight takes b5, and here we can see why Ivanchuk sacrificed this pawn. Because if pawn takes knight, then bishop takes knight. The bishop on f6 was guarding the queen, but no longer, which means that pawn takes bishop simply isn't possible because the queen would be on. And after this, well, white is about to take on d6, about to take on b5, and is going to um, basically just win a pawn. Uh, for example, here, it's, it's basically just another winning endgame. After this, two pawns are attacked. White will win one of them and should be winning. So Negi, well, he wasn't satisfied with uh, just uh, a depressing endgame. He thought, right, let's get rid of this knight. Knight b3 check. Obviously that has to be taken. And then take the knight. But now bishop takes pawn check. If the knight blocks, then we'll just play f4. And basically that bishop is overloaded again. So bishop c6. Bishop d4. And... A very simple move, actually. It's quite clear that that bishop is holding black's position together. 
So if that bishop can be eliminated, then it's game over. So for example, if bishop takes g7 threatened, e5, well, we don't even need to take on d6. Queen e4 is a nice move. And you can see that black is just completely overloaded here uh, on this diagonal. This diagonal, d6 is weak, g7 is, is on prees. It's horrible. So bishop d4 plate. So Negi stepped out of the way onto the c-file. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, and now a simple sidestep. Here, Ivanchuk wants to play knight e4. So he just played king to b1. Very, very calm. Now knight e4 is a threat. If the king steps out of the way, then it's a simple mate. And once again, we have to thank this rook move to the semi-open file. It's now an open file, and it's now going to be mate next move. Simple stuff. And if g6, then knight e4. And in any case, rook g8 was played, and knight e4 was the final move. Threat. Knight d6, threat, knight f6. I'm afraid the king stands no chance in this position at all. If it moves to a dark square, then queen b4 check is going to win the game instantly. So Ivanchuk won that one in just 21 moves. And I think that, that shows how difficult in practical terms this variation is for black. You know, if you look at the game through uh, the eyes of a computer, then you'll see that, well, black has defenses and, you know, but yeah, at the board, well, the world champion showed that it's really not easy at all. There you go. Thanks for watching.